Alright, what's up guys, and of course welcome to another video from your truly this calendar. And yeah, I do want to talk a bit about the Pokedex itself, as uh, this is of course a major leak, but I really think the, the thumbnail kind of speaks for itself. And I do want to talk a little bit about the meta evolving from this, and just overall what I think is going to happen moving forward. Now, it goes without saying, um, there are confirmed 400 Pokemon to the Pokedex, and this is not including any of the mystery event Pokemon that could have been hidden. Uh, and also, there is rumor that there are more Pokemon that could potentially be in the game that aren't just in Pokedex, but are able to be transferred. I think Mew was one of those Pokemon that stood out for that, and uh, hopefully there is more. Uh, the rumor says it's around 630, um, so we really hope that's the case, but we're gonna, of course, go to Pokemon's at face value. Uh, really, my reason for going about this is that I just want to talk about which Pokemon that's going to be, have a significant value if this were to be turning the meta moving forward, uh, which I really hope it isn't. Uh, and also, the purple colors are marking for Pokemon that are now, what do you say? Um, new Pokemon in the meta. So we're gonna go over them, you know, just one by one, really. Uh, so we got the Groki line, which of course, uh, nothing to it, the Scorpion line, Sub line, and then the Blip bug, which is a new psychic bug, uh, which we really hope are, or I hope is good. And then we have the Butterfree line, which I really hope um, get a buff this generation. Um, it really goes without saying, and that's gonna be. Um, Probably one of the most important aspects. I thought I'd do like this. I, I read more of the Pokemon, I think it's going to be significant. Uh, they've got the Vikavolt line and nothing to it either. Uh, Noctile and Hoot Hoot, definitely forget or forgettable. And then we got the Corviknight line. This is something I, I, I expect to be. Look, that one, that'll turn great. Uh, <laughs> I think this is gonna, this looks to be right. Cor Corviknight due to it being steel and yeah. Uh, um, Fine, should that typing alone should be plenty and more so since we either we don't get Skarmory nor we have uh, Celestila, so it's going to it's gonna hold its own quite right. Uh, so that's really great. And we got Scovet and Tree Jump, which really haven't been too impressive. Uh, moving down to uh, Pidu, we can just jump with that pheasant, nothing to it. Um, Nikit and Tybull, something like that. Um, same to it, they're maybe not that exciting. Uh, Obstagoon, which is a normal, normal um, uh, dog type. I really hope, I really hope that Pokemon is good, uh, for sure. Uh, but we know nothing about it as of now. But yeah, hope it's good. That got a lot of cold line was great. Shifter line also great. Um, maybe not um, def gen defining, but they're still great to see here. Then we've got Dreadnought and his Shootal, um, Lipo and Purloin, Jamper and Boltown, which we, I really hope Boltown is good enough, but it got steep competition due to that Poison Electric type. And then we got Bundle B and Diggers B. Um, and I think Diggers B is going to be great. Um, absolutely massive, even more so with the lack of defensive shakes towards it. Chincho is going to be great. Um, Serena is going to be interesting. Uh, one of the few really viable rapid spinners, so that is awesome in its own right. Same with Wild Plume, due to the strength sap, it's going to be really, really good. Same with Blossom, it's going to fill that role too. I think it's going to be a very, very strong this generation if the meta looks like this. Rose Raid goes without saying, probably one of the few really good Reliance Spiker in this meta. That's really all I gotta say about it. Uh, Pelipper, Rain, of course, that's great. Galventula. Great Sticky Weber, Ninetales, I mean, we got after all the Shifter here, so we still got a really strong um, Sun Sweeper, so Ninetales is going to be fine enough, Arcanine, as good as ever, um, Vanillux, it's going to be fine, um, we'll see if we can learn something more, uh, Mammoth Swine, goes without saying, even Pillow Swine, to be honest. Uh, it all depends on which poke or which moves it gets now. I, like I said, I really hope that Manitan gets um, like a recall move to um, uh, representation of an ice based Flare Blitz. I hope Mammoth Swine or so gets that. Um, 
Then we have Delibird, Snorlax Great Lele, which don't care for Frostlass as good as ever. Probably more so now the lack of Ghost types in this generation. Um, it's good enough. Claydol is awful. Crustle is awful. Golurk is awful. Musharna, uh, nah. Satu could be interesting. One of the few Magic Pouncer. Um, that's good enough. Beware. Didn't make that much movement or impact in Generation 7. So I don't think it's going to do that this time either, unfortunately. Um, Killer and Bombers, no, nothing to it. Quagsire. Yeah. <laughs> Quagsire looks to be quite right this generation. Um, the thing is, what made Quagsire less viable in Generation 7 had a lot to do with Bulu being just really significant. The Kartana easily, of course, forcing it out and defeating it. Um, which both of them have gone. It really is going to take a lot to make to get Quagsire go down naturally, and that's going to be interesting to see moving forward. Um, Crawdont, I put it there. It's, it's good enough. Um, and then we got the, the Lee Chen top line. Uh, Hitman top could very well, actually, between these, actually have been the more uh, viable now since there, we have no talent flames. We really don't have any of those really high tier flying ties. And so it's going to be a very light rapid spinner, and even more so now that, well, Rapid Spinner and Defog could be, well, less viable. Um, Clang Clang, I don't know. Um, can be a Vespa Queen as awful as ever. Bronze Song is now a very, very lone Steel Psychic type now that we know that Metagross is not a game. And a very good Stealth Rocker. Um, Guard Wars still good enough. Um, then we got Drift Flame, which, yeah, maybe not. And Gustflow and Elderflower know nothing really about. Sherubi and Sherim, same thing there. Skunk Tank, okay, okay. No, Seismitoad, yes. Um, goes without saying, really. Seismitoad is great, and Self Rocks, and great dual typing. It, it, it holds its own. Uh, then Machamp, it has it's a Galarian or the Gigantamax form. It's gonna say Galarian form, but Gigantamax form. But I really, really couldn't tell you if it helps it be more viable or not. Um, as now, I'm being a bit reluctant. It could be good, but yeah. And Gengar is always good. Jaros, um, yeah, I think so. Though you know with both Mantine and then that new. Um, the new water flying, I mean, they're all here, but of course, I think Jardos plays on a different level, I uh, really do, um, Cloyster, as awful as ever, Malachek, great, um, Garbodor, I think, can have a significant disgeneration, mainly because of its Gigantamax form, but also, it is one of the few, much like uh, Rose Raid, one of the few really solid um, Rocker or st Spiker and Toxic Spiker, and that's great. Um, I said this course, I can't say too much about it, uh, but I think the defensive typing enough is enough to force it for some really, really nasty situation. Same queen with the role of Paul the Colossal. Uh, Colossal don't have the best defensive typing, but for my money, it doesn't matter. I think that can be significant anyway. Um, I hope so at least. Dug Trio, Arena Trap, yeah. It, got, it was so good, it got banned, so we'll see if it gets re banned. Uh, Exit Riddle goes without saying. Gigalith is awesome. Conkeldur is, of course, better than Machamp in every way. So even <laughs> if Machamp is here, uh, you are you are actually loving Conkeldur more. That really goes without saying. Um, Steelix, mm, kind of shaky. Kind of shaking that one. Nah, I don't put. Uh, no Everline is really good, I think I saw the Swoop at, nobody cares for that. Uh, but Steel League is around there somewhere. Then we got Aracuda and Barskuda, which is the new water Barracuda Pokemon. Thing is here, I need to see more about it to to make an opinion. Same way here with Perserker. It's the Viking Helmet Meowth or Glarium Meowth, but yeah, we don't know too much about it. I really hope it's good. But that's that's all I really can hope for. Uh, Rebombi, best sticky webber should probably remain that. Um, Ferrothorn, Ferrothorn is Ferrothorn. I mean, 
It's the best grass steel, hands down. Says Cortana's gone. Uh, Gorgeist. Um, nah. Um, and then we got the evolutions, and it goes without saying like Vaporeon, Jolteon, Espeon, Umbreon, Sylveon. Great Pokemon. Uh, I'm going actually to put Leafeon here due to Ninetales. I do believe Leafeon is a lot better in this generation than this is all the 400 was going to use, mainly because its stab combination might be extremely crucial for the upcoming meta. So I'm done with this. I am absolutely done with this. Um, Flapple and Appletune are the new Dragon um, Dragon Grass types, and uh, we know nothing about it, but I could hope that they have some significant um, Meowstic, Forgettable, Slurpuff. The thing with Slurpuff is that, yeah, it's still a sticky web bird. No, I wouldn't. Nah, no. Uh, Aroma Tea, same thing here. Nothing to it. It's not too threatening. Araquanid, tremendous. Uh, Surfetch, I think it's going to be great. <laughs> no joke. Um, since it's most likely going to keep Raber, U turn, Leaf Play, Knock Up. It's going to be one of those Pokemon that has such a broad move pool as a whole. So I really hope it naturally just makes sense uh, at, at work. Um, then we have Lantern, which is kind of shaky. It could be interesting um, if Lantern could make a mark, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go there. At least not yet. Same with Toxic Croak. It's this meta might. Yeah, I think this meta might invite it to be much more reliable. Scrafty, same thing there. Like there are fairies in this meta, but all the fairies so far, with a few exceptions are tremendously slow, so Scrafty might work. Though it has to work with Iron Head this time around and not um, being able to capitalize on C-moves, so it's kind of shaky, so I want to say it's good, but maybe not good enough. Uh, Stunfisk, gotta see it in action before I make my choice about it. Shuckle survived for all the right reasons. Um, Wishcast, <laughs> why though? Um, absolute threat. Um, <laughs> let's see, Gastrodon. Goes without saying. Um, wait. Um, Gastrodon is gonna be viable no matter what. And um, more so in defensive teams, but consider we have one Pokemon that are tremendously tough to beat down. Gastrodon might be one of the few Pokemon that can take it all. So I think it's gonna be um, um, a high valued Pokemon for sure. Uh, Golisopod. First impression, this generation might not be as scary. Though there are a lot of combinations here that are benefiting. You know what? The Gully Support works. Like Choice Bank Gully Support is a big threat. Um, Kursla, I'm gonna just say it. I think it's gonna be great. And Grim Snarl, then the latest status of Dim Timp. Um, the Dark and Fury combination. Um, really hope, really hope that. Um, that Pokemon is going to be good. I'm just putting it there directly, hoping that that's the case. Um, they've got Heaterine, which is a new Psychic Fairy, and I think that's going to be viable no matter what. Uh, so that's why we just do that, because I think I, I think it's going to be great. Uh, Salasso may be kind of quite shy of being viable. Um, it's still probably going to be one of those really mid-tiers that does a really good amount of job, job in lease. But as of now, it, it's I find it hard to put it there, mainly because of so many really strong water types survive this. Then the Phantom Snap, Bishop is Bishop. Just don't don't sleep with a Bishop. Fro and Sork made it, uh, which in its own right is quite good. I just think there's maybe too many soul fine types survive this kind of environment. I mean, not seeing Breloom, not seeing stuff like that. It it will bother me uh, because we have so many good. Soul fighter ties, but they are just not going to compare to Conqueror. It's just that's not happening. Um, they've got the new Weezing. It's going to be good no matter what. Sudowoodoo survived. Clefable goes without saying. Togekiss goes without saying. Snorlax goes without saying. Whimsicott goes without saying. Um, Desotroya goes without saying. Rapier is great. It's going to be awesome this generation for sure. Gothafell, due to Arena Trap, could be good. Without it, it's kind of lacks Lustring. Reuniclus is awesome. Uh, Scavalier is going to be great, Axillor is going to be great, BHM we can forget about. Um, Betic, eh, no. Braviary, no. Manabas, yes. Grapion, yes. Grapion is probably going to come back to 
that area was in you know, I think generation six where it moved between you and RU because of its viability it was really good um, as a whole, but it just didn't hold a candle. Actually, Bravier is good with Defunk, never mind. Um, but um, basically, Drapion was just once Alola Muck came, there really was no, no competition because of that defensive aspect. But it could very well come back for that very same reason of being a good Pursuit Trapper, Knockout, and of course, potential Assault Vest. We'll have to see. Chandelure, I think, is tough. It's very tough to switch into, even more so now. Mimikyu should be extremely dangerous. And now we know that Copper J and Q Fan are pure steel type. <laughs> so that's about it. Uh, Jelly Scent. It might be as much as a Gastrodon, just one of those very few counters to Toxapex, because Toxapex is absolutely the most dangerous Pokemon by far uh, to deal with as it is. I think it's all just for Uniclus and Toxapex to survive with Regenerator. We have no, no Tangrowth, nothing like that. We have nothing that naturally shakes Toxapex at all. Uh, Toxapex right now is... It's not an offensive threat, but it's a defensive Pokemon that just... Ooh, you can't beat it. You can't beat it. Which is why I think it's tox Toxitricity is going to be interesting, that Steel. Um, what do you call it? Steel... No, Poison Electric type. Um, it's just going to be, for sure. Uh, hey, Powdon is going to be super important. Stealth Rocket this time around. And Durant and Heatmore, uh, they're there. Durant is threatening, though without C moves, it's limited. Hildolisk, yeah. Halush, however. Um, now, we don't know if any of these Pokemon get a natural terrain, um, for sure. But anyway, we know already that Luxray, I do believe, is in the game. And that should be plenty. We have Pokemon here that can set up a train on their own, so that could be some kind of niche. Setting up a price to train with uh, Wavesicard for, of course, Mr. Train, and then how to come in and get that uh, Fairy Seed, if there are in the game, that is. Um, that could be very benefiting for Halucha. If not, Halucha can. It looks to be the power herb variant with uh, Wizcat, I guess. Flying on, it's gonna be great. Um, I've gone record saying that Flying on might be the best D for this generation if this is all the Pokemon we get. Um, it's a stretch, of course it is, but um, I do want to say that I think that's an aspect to keep on. Uh, Flying on, of course, is now the only ground and, uh, and ground dragon since neither Psygarde nor Garchomp made it this game, so Flying on can be viable no matter what because of its stat combination, it's just that good. Um, Hectors or Hectors, nothing to it. Uh, Ru Runergius, dear god. Um, I think it's gonna be good. Aegislash is gonna be banned. But uh, Jubilee is gonna be viable also, so um, do like that. I think that makes sense. Um, Alolan Rapidash, um, no, Galerian Rapidash, I think it's gonna be good. And uh, it's going to be that for a different reason. Um, my reasons why Rapidash is going to be viable this time is because I think it's going to be either 105 or 115 in speed. And since we lack now physical psychic types that are viable, um, such as Medisham and Delayed, I think Rapidash is going to fill that void. And I think it's going to do that quite right. Um, Poltergeist, I couldn't tell you. It's all ghost type, that's about it. Trevenant made it. So, dear God, where was it? <clears throat> well, two ghost, ghost uh, grass. So that's gonna be interesting. And then we got the octopus variant here. Um, I really hope they're good. I couldn't tell you, but it's soul fighting. There wasn't water, which was really unfortunate. And then we got the purchurin, <coughs> which is the elec new electric Pukamuga, basically. And since it's a sea urchin, I think it's gonna be a spiker. If it's a spiker, it's viable. Uh, they got Mantine. Mantine's great defogger, nothing to it. Waylord, I don't know. Avalog, no. Delmise. Probably a very strong spinner. Um, this goes without saying, though. That means we have. Of the, like, uh, this is kind of awful, isn't it? Consider that we have. Of the four Ghost and Grass types, we now have three of them in this game. The City Wave, which is clearly the best one of them, didn't make it. We have so many ghost types that didn't make it, and we have so many grass types that didn't make it. 
that this feels kind of rough if that's the case. Like I said previously, a Breloom, Chestnut, you know, that's a combination you want or at least capitalize on and none of them getting it. It's kind of, <clears throat> kind of bad. Lapras not going to be workable as far as I'm aware, though it has that special move when it's Gigantamaxing it just works like um, Aurora Veil. So we don't see how that works. The Lunatron and Soul Rock <clears throat> all depends on the game. Um, Mr. Mime and Mr. Rhyme viable, hands down. <laughs> Uh, Darmanitan goes without saying it's going to be viable. And then we have um, the Stone Yor, Eskior, and Duraludon. Duraludon is going to be great. Eskior, I don't know. Same with Stone Yor, don't know how they're going to replicate on. Rodon is probably going to be one of the best DFR in the game, if not the best. I said Flying was probably the best, but well, Rodon Wash, regular Rodon, Rodon Mo, uh, all of them are viable Stealth Rock, or I mean Defogger, so that's great. Um, Charizard? Yeah, no. Uh, and then we've got the fossil Pokemon, so I'm gonna just do it like this. I think all of them is gonna be awesome. And that should be nothing to it. We'll see what happens afterwards. Uh, Seal Valley goes without saying. Uh, Tyrantar is viable. Hydreigon is viable. Gudra might be viable. Kamo is gonna be viable. Dragapult is gonna be viable. And I can't speak for the others here. Um, really couldn't. Oh, I missed Frostmoth. There we go. Toga tomorrow is going to be viable too, right? Let's see, more Pico, Fettlings. Ah, Pazimia is going to be good. I thought I missed these completely. Seal is going to be great. Damn, I missed a lot of Pokemon here. I didn't mean to. Um, Meeval is going to be still good. Um, Sigil is going to be good. Lucario is going to be good. Uh, but yeah, so the, these are quite a few Pokemon that I think is going to be viable. This, of course, is a complete decks, and I'll actually post this picture down below uh, together with uh, the page on which Pokemon didn't make it. Because um, I think it's important to kind of capitalize on this. Um, it's very clear, no matter how twist and turn things from here, um, the most significant Pokemon is going to be tough to deal with are Toxapex. And it's actually Toxapex alone, not because Toxapex is. A super fitting Pokemon, but since the most OU here isn't active at all, the most viable ground types, the most viable grass types, and more sort of best electric types, like hands down the best, the best electric type here is Jolteon. I, I, I easily put that like top 10 somewhere. Um, the other one below, above that, like Zapdos, Thunderous, Serora, none of them are here. Um, and while they aren't checked, there are so Pokemon that threading Toxic Pokemon out naturally. We don't have them here. And that could be extremely dangerous when you go against a Pokemon that are very, very, having a very easy time to capitalize on moves such as uh, Toxic Spikes, Toxic Scalds, and Skull Burns. Um, and of course, it's very easy to build with though. Toxic Pokemon and uh, um, what do you call the other one? Uh, Corviknight is going to be a great combination with the Skarmory and Pex was before it. And we have Clefable, we have Ferraform, we have Pokemon that just quags are, we have Stall that works naturally. Um, hopefully we have Wall Breakers that deal with them in contrast quite well, but that's the thing, we don't know that yet. Though I argue that um, Toxicity, the, the electric poison type with Inner Power Fire might very well cover that whole issue alone, but definitely needs an acid plant combination with there. Only speculate though, and it's clearly forced out from other Pokemon that do deal with it quite well. So we can only assume. Since the Scorch is going to be interesting and see whether or not it can do some work, but yeah. Uh, this is my take on it, and these are all the 400 Pokemon we know about in the decks. Hopefully, there's more. But I think you all can make a rough assumption what's going to happen in this meta. Uh, there really aren't that many spinner, there aren't that many stealth rocker either. Right here is going to be one of the greatest stealth rockers around, I'm for sure. Uh, but Yellison is going to have a, a bit of more viability, I think, due to it being able to check Pex quite with Taunt and whatnot. But it has come in on potential poison, and that's never great. Uh, so, yeah, guys, for watching. <laughs> that's all I had. Take care, guys. Bye.